So for the final part of this, uh, this lecture, I'm going to look at some micro and nanoscale testing, which is um, some work that's been going on in, in my research group, um, inherited from things that Steve Roberts started in the past and um, working a lot with colleagues like Dave Armstrong and uh, Ji Cheng Gong. Um, and so really uh, the basis for this was coming at um, having uh, a nano indenter available to us. And one of the problems with interpreting data from a nano indenter is that actually the stress state in the material is, is quite complicated. It varies with uh, position out from the uh, the, the centre of the, the indent crater and it varies with uh, angle round the, the indent because um, well there's a compression radially uh, a tension in the hoop directions and of course if you do that within a single crystal it means that actually as you move around the indent uh, crater the stresses are quite different um, relative to the crystal axis so quite complicated to interpret what's going on sometimes with those sorts of tests. At the same time, we had focused iron beam instruments becoming more and more available, which allow us to mill into uh, a sample surface um, some small uh, micron scale um, structures. And so in this case here, we've come in at an angle undercut from two different directions to create a sort of a, um, a freestanding cantilever here which in our nano indenter we can use that as a crude uh, AFM type tool to image where the cantilever is, place the load point on the free end of the cantilever uh, and press down on here and, and perform a very small scale bend test. So in other words can a fib plus the AFM function of a nano indenter and the loading system, can that allow us to do mechanical testing and get stress strain data down at the, the micro scale? And obviously I wouldn't be uh, giving this bit of the lecture if, if the answer to that was simply no. Um, so here's very early work from, from Steve Roberts and, and David uh, De Mayo um, using a fib to cut out a, a freestanding cantilever here that they were um, working on a, a hard coating and trying to measure its fracture toughness so the cantilever also has a notch cut uh, near that end there and then this were placed in the uh, nano indenter system uh, load applied at this end and eventually well you see um, a hard material here it uh, loads up in a very linear way until you get a, uh, a sudden drop in the load because the sample breaks. Um, they made some calibration um, tests in silicon before moving to a, quite a complicated coating system actually on, a, uh, on steels. You can also use this to, to probe uh, plasticity. And this is work um, with uh, Ji Cheng Gong looking at uh, titanium. So again a fibbed cantilever. So here's the freestanding sort of triangular micro Toblerone um, uh, cantilever in here. Uh, the, uh, the far end of it is, is off, uh, off the frame. Here's a finite element uh, model rendition of it. Um, and again we can displace this end in here and um, work out what's going on in terms of the stresses which are largest near, near this, this built-in end. And so you can see here uh, slip features on the top surface and down here as well uh, on that inclined side surface in here. So the plasticity is contained within this, in, this end here. And what um, Ji Cheng was able to do was from the load displacement data, so now of course the load displacements are, are very small. These are in uh, nanometers, so we're displacing to, to thousands of nanometers. And the loads are, are down in the, sorry, that should say micro-Newton um, regime in here. Um, what we can do, because there are stress-strain gradients both along the cantilever and through the thickness here away from the neutral axis, the finite element model allows us to go from the, uh, the blue experimental data here, changing parameters within our slip rule 
in here until we can extract the correct critical resolve shear stress um, for the system by fitting, uh, running the model with very many, many different parameters until we find a, a best fit. Here's a further example looking at um, prism slip in titanium alloys and going with different sizes of the, the cantilever. So importantly there is a size effect so as we make things smaller and smaller then they tend to get stronger and stronger for a variety of different reasons. So you need to be aware of that and be able to extrapolate out here to essentially values that are more consistent with a, a macro scale measurement. Um, but you can see here measurements on uh, A-type slip on prism planes, the softest system in titanium uh, alloys, going from uh, commercially pure titanium here, which is uh, not particularly strong. The critical resolve shear stress is kind of less than 200 megapascals, about 150-ish, um, up to a binary system where we have aluminium as a, a solute uh, in the system here and you can see that that generates some strengthening and moving here to the one at the top um, a classic engineering alloy titanium 6 aluminium 4 vanadium so the BCC vanadium uh, tends to stabilize the the beta phase so we have a, a dual phase system an alpha beta um, system in here and the strengthening that you get uh, from having the beta ligaments present is, is seen in here this is a very similar um, type of thing. This is for a basal slip in those three systems, looking at the load displacement data um, for similar size cantilevers. So for uh, the pure titanium, the titanium with uh, aluminium as a solute, and then for the, the dual, the, the two phase um, system in here for the 6.4. You can go back after testing uh, the system so see slip steps on the top surface you can see slip features at the at the bottom here too if you go back to the fib prepare a tem lamella uh, from here then you see through the structure so this is the um, uh, this is the built-in end of the cantilever starting from from about here these features running through this way are uh, the beta ligaments the other phase in the structure and you can see sort of dislocations within within here within a plastic zone and at the top in fact at the top surface I'll zoom in on here top surface you can see those uh, those slip steps corresponding to these things here and you can see slip bands running down through the material you can see a lot more slip at the the bottom side there because the the strains are rather larger at the at the bottom than they are at the top it's further from the neutral axis of that triangular shape. Um, Ju Cheng has done uh, an awful lot of work uh, combining actually ultrasonic um, fatigue with small scale testing. So the idea is if instead of a large sample on the end here, you just put a small sample block and in that sample block you cut micro cantilevers, then the micro cantilever, um, the, 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 the block on the end, um, will act as a spring and if you drive this system up and down very very rapidly the free end lags behind gets pulled along uh, and it will it will flex and it will cycle and vibrate at that 20 kilohertz um, frequency that we drive into the system you have to have these slightly strange shapes because there's a spring stiffness um, uh, from this cantilever here but you need a, a large mass on the end of it to couple enough stress in to, to generate fatigue. So um, this is one uh, size in here. This is one of the finest structures that Ji Cheng uh, ever looked at um, uh, and, and broke in here. Uh, so this is just zoomed in. So this is a, a few hundred nanometers uh, across, probably the smallest uh, fatigue test that's ever been conducted uh, and a rather larger uh, mass on the end of this. Um, Moving to slightly larger structures, if you use a thin foil and cut through with a, a laser, you can generate structures that are a few hundred microns across and have patches of microstructure to look at. And this is in a stainless steel here. Uh, again, same sort of idea. This acts as a big mass on this spring. 
the thing vibrates, it vibrates at 20 kilohertz, means you can go to very large numbers of cycles and then eventually the thing will fail. You see this is uh, after we've tested it, so an absence in here. If you look at that fracture surface in here, hopefully you can just about pick out that there are some um, striations across that surface as, as typifies fatigue. This is just looking at SN data that has been uh, been generated, but you can see in here that, well, 10 to the 6 is about a minute, it's 50 seconds of testing, so you can carry on out to gigacycles um, in here, which under conventional testing regimes is actually really quite difficult to, to get to, it just takes so long. We can couple this with um, in situ observations, so this is using an optical microscope to look at a, a sample, this is a nickel based uh, super alloy um, 718 uh, and you can kind of just about see some some grain structure in there um, this is going to vibrate live we're going to do about a million cycles and uh, what you'll see is some uh, little flecks of material uh, coming out as we get a, a very localized response to the uh, the vibration to the deformation so we're starting to vibrate it and can you see these little uh, ribbons of, of material that are uh, that are extruded out where there's uh, slip activity and you see that one there just sort of spooled off you'll see other pieces um, starting to generate stuff and maybe see that there's a sort of connected path uh, across the sample um, here you can see that one stopped for a bit and now is was generating uh, uh, more more extrusion uh, of material here. These very localized, essentially persistent slip bands in the system um, where deformation is occurring. Tends to be linked to twins uh, in the nickel based super alloy and eventually this thing would run to failure and you can kind of see a, a crack path joining up across the across the sample there. What you can go in afterwards is, is look at the um, look in the SEM at the, the details of what's going on or Alternatively, uh, and we have a part two working on this this year, but this was a, a, a preliminary test that, that Ji Cheng uh, undertook, is having a similar system, vibrating cantilever, but now in an SEM. Um, again, this is looking at a, um, a super alloy, um, and we're going to see a crack coming in from down here somewhere and running uh, across the sample um, as we go. So a block of loading, stop, take an image, block of loading, top, stop, take an image. So it's kind of a stop go animation of a crack running in as you can see here and the slip features that are associated with it as it runs across uh, the sample and goes from, from grain to grain. So you can see it taking zigzag on multiple slip systems, slightly flatter here where the slip system happened to be in the right sort of direction to it. So trying to understand what's going on uh, in these things where the crack uh, is slower, where it runs fast, is very important for trying to understand the, the mechanics at the, the grain scale, the microstructural scale, of where does resistance to uh, fatigue crack propagation come from. Okay, that was the, the final example I think I, I had in here. Just got on this last slide um, a, a slightly potted history of, or a potted catchment of, of some of the equipment we have available in the, in the department. So we do have server hydraulic um, testing systems, uh, uh, we also have in, in my group um, now a, quite a number of uh, piezo uh, actuated fatigue uh, rigs to do these accelerated tests and small scale testing. We have rather more conventional screw driven uh, mechanical test frames, uh, a variety of different loadings. We have furnaces and environmental chambers for these. We have optical systems for doing uh, digital, digital image correlation. We have a bunch of uh, nano indenters. Um, uh, a growing a growing list of, of these, um, some of which the, the first few on here, the first three on here, uh, are work with uh, at room temperature uh, primarily. Um, some of them have add-ons for, for doing um, uh, scratch testing or high rate testing. Um, we also have a very high temperature in vacuum system um, uh, 
nano indenter with a heated sample and a heated indenter. So this is uh, uh, a unique bit of kit that uh, Dave Armstrong's group runs. And we've also more recently got a, um, uh, a Brooker Hyzotron um, uh, indenter in the lab, faster electronics. Uh, we can do arrays of indents on that. And we also have an in situ system on a, on a FEGSEM um, that's recently been installed. So we can do some in situ uh, observations of indentation, but also of, of, of micro cantilever and micro pillar compression tests. And of course, you can only do those micro cantilever type tests if you can also access um, a focused iron beam. And actually the department's uh, blessed with uh, multiple instruments uh, for that. So first three have gallium ions and the, the final one in here has a, uh, a xenon uh, plasma as the source, so a, a rather heavier uh, iron uh, that, that cuts rather quicker in, in lots of materials, so you can cut rather larger structures with that. Okay, um, with that I'll, uh, I'll stop. Um, obviously you'll have, you'll have interpreted some of this as a as a pitch for advertising research within my group um, and uh, Dave Armstrong's group uh, with a view to the fact that you might be selecting part two projects in the near future.